everybody, Anne here. It is a bright and sunshiny morning, sitting on my porch, having my coffee as usual, in my brand new pretty little jacket, because it's a little tiny chilly out here. So today I'm going to try and answer all those questions. I'm going to try and hold this phone um, as steady as I can. So there's a whole bunch of questions, so here we go. Um, why did you choose van life? What caused you to choose van life and why tiny life? Well, I initially wanted to do the tiny house homestead thing, but I was living in Ohio at the time and I couldn't find any land I could afford. So I decided to get the van and just move into my van, save up money, and then basically get what I have now. Um, what caused me to do that? Well, I was tired of the day in and day out hamster wheel sort of a thing, you know, go to work, come home, pay your bills, and, you know, maybe, maybe go out and do something every once in a while if, if I could afford it. And I was just tired of it. I, I would rather have less and be able to experience life more. So that's why I did it. Basically, I just wanted to get away from the mundane my mundane life, as it were. Okay, um, are you single? I'm divorced. I've been divorced since 1987, and I've not ever come close to getting married again. So that's that. Um, let's see. Does does Betty like a tiny house better than the van? She seems to. Um, the van, she did like the van. You know, she did like the van because it's a nice, cozy, little, small space. But the tiny house, she seems to be calmer. She seems to be more relaxed. And she has more freedom when she's outside, so I think she likes this better. Is this going to be your final place? Are you going to get any animals? Do you have a composting toilet? Yes, I plan to age in place here. That's why I'm trying to get everything set up now so that as I grow older, um, it won't be such a struggle like it is now. Um, animals, yes. First, I want to get chickens. If I can keep chickens alive for a year, then I want to try some goats and then just move on from there. Um, composting toilet, yeah, I've already got a composting toilet. I've got a video, a, a few videos back. Just have a look, you'll be able to find it. Okay, are you going to get more solar panels? Um, yes, in fact, I got my stimulus check and I have ordered two new solar panels. I've ordered one new battery and one new charge controller, but the charge controller that I got isn't, that I ordered isn't the best one, but it's what I could afford for right now. So, yep. Yeah, um, what about heating in the winter? Uh, are you going to get a refrigerator? Heat, uh, I hope to do with a wood-burning stove that I'll get eventually. Refrigerator, I don't know if I want to use the energy for a refrigerator. I'm hoping to get eventually just a really nice um, ice chest, a cooler that will keep ice for, you know, a week to ten days. That's what I would like. Um, is your tiny house paid for? Are you making payments? The tiny house is paid for but they are very affordable if you want to get them financed. Most of them will um, give you, sell you one and it's like a lease to own sort of a thing. And they're reasonable payments. Even if you don't have any credit, you can more than likely get one of these buildings. Okay. Um, are you going to continue to use the van to travel and explore? Yes, I am. Right now she's kind of stripped on the inside because a lot of stuff in the inside of that van I pulled into the tiny house. So once I get the proper stuff in the tiny house, some of that stuff is going to go back into the van so that I can continue to go out and explore and camp and do stuff like that. Um, how do you afford your needs? I do DoorDash. Um, I used to be a registered nurse. When I left Ohio, I pretty much, I think I've just left that life behind me. Um, so uh, whenever I need something, if I need food or pay bills or whatever, I just do DoorDash. I want to try and work as little as possible because I'm going to be 56 this year and although I got still got a few good work years left in me I want to start enjoying my life as much as possible okay bodybuilding photos can you let us see them yeah I'll get some I need to find them I don't know where they are at I'm sure I've got them in an electronic file somewhere I will share them with you I look nothing like I do now back then okay then somebody asked about my hydroponic garden um, what happened to it? Well, I gave it all away. Everything. I had the lights, I had the reflectix on the wall, I had an entire um, closet covered in that silvery stuff with the lights and everything. 
I gave it all away, gave all the plants away, everything. Is that something to do here? Is it possible for me to do hydroponics here? Yeah, it absolutely is. In fact, if you have good sunlight, um, you don't even need the lights. You can do hydroponics outside. You don't need to do, um, you don't have to circulate the air. I, I use the Kratky method, method, if you know what that is. Um, and it's basically just deep water, you know, with nutrients in it and the roots, the plant sits in, I used um, hydroton or hydroton, however you say it, the little clay pebbles um, and rock wool, the seeds would grow in the rock wool and then the, um, the roots would come down all the way to the bottom where the water was with the nutrients. You can do that, you can do it in a glass jar, absolutely it can be done here. Are you going to get grapes, fruit, trees, or berries? Someday? Yep, I hope to. How hard was it to get away from the rat race? It wasn't hard at all. The minute, the first night and the day after I stayed in the van was just so easy. It was so much more, I don't know how to explain it. i got to change hands here. Um, I was so much more at peace. It was absolutely the easiest thing I've ever done. It was the best decision I've ever made, and I don't regret a second of it. Um, do you miss health care? I miss the patients. I really miss the patients. Um, anthill update. An update on the anthill. No, I've tried several different things. I keep trying to flatten them. I have tried um, vinegar, and I've tried a combination of vinegar and flattening them and the anthills just keep moving so no I'm gonna to have to do something more extreme do you stockpile or is that something that you normally do anyways no I I don't stockpile I don't believe well I, it's not that I don't believe in it it's just right now I don't have the space I think at some point in time yeah I probably will um, develop an abundance of food canning and stuff like that but no I've never been a stockpile kind of a person how many tattoos do you have? I don't know. I'm not really sure. I mean, maybe 20. Um, but the ones on my arms kind of all go into one another, and so I don't even know how many I have. Quite a few. When, how old were you when you got your first tattoo? I was 30. I was 30. <laughs> I was 30. I, in fact, on my 30th birthday, I got my first tattoo. And it was so funny. I was such a big baby. I'm like squirming all around and everything. And then each subsequent tattoo after that, it's like I would just sit there like a rock. It didn't even bother me. It felt kind of good, actually. Um, do I regret any of my tattoos? Absolutely not. I love each and every one of them, although a few of them need to be touched up. Okay. What type of nurse were you and how old were you when you became one? Are you retired? Um, well, I started out in oncology. And then and oncology and head and neck surgery, um, I worked in the hospital. Uh, it was about the first five years. And eventually I went to home care. And so home care made up the bulk of my career as a nurse. Um, how old when you became a nurse? I was... I was just about 30. Yeah, I was just about 30 years old. Um, I went to... I didn't start college until I was around, oh, I don't know, mid to late 20s, something like that. So, um, are you retired now? I would say I am probably, probably retired from nursing. I haven't made that up, absolute, that decision 100%. Um, one thing is, well, in home care, I couldn't work in a facility or a hospital or anything. That's just too much. You know, you got to respect those nurses that, that work go day after day into the hospital or into the long-term care centers and just keep going and keep doing it because it is a tough, tough job. So hats off to you ladies and gentlemen. Um, if I did home care, uh, the, the companies I've spoken to around here, I would be required to take on call. And I can't drive at night. My vision at nighttime is so poor. There would just be no way I could do on call. Um, and that's where if a patient, anybody's patient, gets sick in the middle of the night, if it's if you're on rotation, you have to go in the middle of the night and help them. And um, I just couldn't let anybody down because I just I'm terrified to drive at night. So, okay, what company built your shed? The um, the kind of shed that I have is a Dirksen 
cabin. It's a standard Dirksen cabin. And the company I got it from is Cornerstone Coverings in Jackson, Tennessee. And they're awesome. Uh, how do you wring out your clothes? Well, um, when I have the little wash tub system with the, the one with the little holes on the bottom, I would tie it up and bungee it up and I would twist it and let it spin. And <laughs> I would just do that a few times and then I would just wring it out by hand. So that's pretty much what I do now. Um, just wring it out by hand. And I'd like to get one of those clothes wringer thingies, the old-fashioned kind. And I'm going to get one of those eventually. I have to look around for one. Um, 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 um. What was van life like before... What was life like before living in a van? Go to work, come home, pay my bills. Um, the only joy that I had was growing things. I grew them inside my apartment. I grew them outside my apartment and going fishing. Um, but it was just, it was just mundane. It was not a happy life for me. Okay, why did you leave Ohio? I left Ohio because, well, I didn't like the climate. I was tired of the cold. I couldn't find any property there um, that would let me have a tiny house. Um, couldn't find any that I could afford. Um, I didn't I didn't like where I was living. I didn't like the people I was living around. I didn't like my job. I didn't like my career. Um, so that's why I just needed to get out of there. <laughs> and I did, and I'm super glad I did. Um, are you well versed in the culture of mushrooms? No, no. I read my book religiously and I consult with other smarter people than me. Um, have you ever gotten sick from eating a mushroom? Nope. Because I don't eat anything that is not 100% identified as an edible mushroom. Um, if I have any doubt, I either consult with somebody, like I said, who knows more than me, or I don't eat it. Um, 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 do I miss Ohio? No. Well, I miss a couple places in Ohio that I used to go fishing and mushroom hunting, but other than that, no, I don't. Um, my grandkids and my son are still in Ohio, so of course I miss them, um, but... But that's it. Okay. Are you going to fence your entire par, uh, property or an area for Betty? No, I'm not going to fence anything. Um, for Betty, if I were to fence anything for her, it would have to be like eight feet tall because she's very agile and she could jump over even a six foot fence if she got a mind to do it. So that would just not be cost effective. So, no, uh uh. No fence. Are you on a fixed income? How do you make ends meet? I think I already answered that one. Yeah, um, I work for DoorDash, and um, whenever I need money, I go to work, and uh, I kind of like it. I like it. I do. It's At first, it was a rocky start because I didn't really know how things worked, but once you understand the rules and what you need to do to be able to get on the schedule and whatnot, um, it's actually kind of fun. <laughs> I think it's fun. And this whole uh, quarantine thing as of late has been great for business. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, do I have health insurance? No, I don't. I do not have, have health insurance, although DoorDash is starting to offer certain types of insurance, so I might look into that. Um, what was life like as a nurse? Well, I'm going to check switch arms again. Initially, it was really exciting. It was something that I really loved. I had such a deep passion for, for nursing and taking care of patients and helping their families understand, you know, how to navigate through their illnesses. Um, I was the nurse that could take care of any kind of patient, even what some would, you know, label difficult patients. Um, I seemed to be able to get along with all of them and I was able to get through to them and I was able to impact their health in a positive way. Um, so that's what it was like in the beginning. And things kind of changed and I think I just get a little older and I kind of, I don't know, I just maybe kind of lost my passion for it. Um, in home care I worked for one company for like 18 years. And um, the woman who owned that company was an amazing phenomenal woman and um, once the I'm not going to get into the details because it's a very painful thing and this actually played a part in me leaving Ohio um, the company was taken over by somebody else and I was there when the company started out so it um, 
I think that just kind of broke my spirit. Well, in addition to my old boss, who was my mentor, she was half my age, but smarter than anybody else I've ever known. Um, so the company changed hands and things were never the same. And I had a hard time understanding how all of that could have happened, you know. Um, but I truly love this woman. I'm not going to say her name. <sighs> I need to talk about something else now. Um, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. My first job as a nurse was in oncology. Um, travel plans in the U.S. I really don't have any travel plans. I'm sorry, this phone is moving around. Um, I don't have any travel plans right now, just because I'm so happy right where I'm at. Do I have a bucket list of what I want to see? No, I don't. Except for the new stuff growing on my property. Um, I... I do want to get out and do some fishing around here in Tennessee, um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, family come to see you, kids, yes, my parents have been down here, my mom and dad, and um, my son, May, he was supposed to come in May, but do this whole quarantine thing, I don't think it's going to happen, um, and bring the grandkids too, so that'll happen eventually, but just not sure when. Um, how did I find the land? Well, it was recommended from some other people. Um, who had bought land here before and it's through the West Tennessee Landman. You can look up look him up on Facebook and yes there are more properties available like mine not right on this street um, but all over West Tennessee and a very great company to work with. It's family owned and operated. They're very reasonable. Basically all you have to do is go pick out your land and um, you have to pay the down payment and then just make your monthly payments. And if you make your monthly payments, you'll be fine. Most of the properties do not have water. Um, some of them have electricity at the road, but if you're thinking of getting a tiny house like mine, they won't put electricity to one of these tiny houses. So you gotta think about that. Okay, why Tennessee? Is it cheaper? Is it the down home people? Yes, Tennessee is cheaper, the gas is less expensive, and yes, absolutely, the people here in Tennessee are just phenomenal. It's a different culture than the people in Ohio. Um, just proper, just, you know, proper but laid back, you know. Um, the men, most of them are yes ma'am, no ma'am, and um, the women are just nicer. They're just, uh, it's just different, yeah. Um, how long is your growing season and are there other seasonal crops? I don't know. Uh, this is my first year down here. I imagine the growing season is pretty long, um, but that's yet to be seen as far as seasonal crops. I'm sure that you can plant different things, you know, at different times of the year. Um, I do know that it doesn't get really frigid cold. I think the coldest it got down to here was like 19 degrees and that was just one time. Um, usually it's, it hovers around freezing during the winter, so that's not too bad. Um, do you get lonely in the de desolation of the country? No, <laughs> I don't. I got my Betty. Um, I've got my Betty. I've got um, plenty of stuff to do out here. I've been kind of a loner, solitary person for a very, very long time. And so I like being alone. I, I just don't get lonely. It's weird, I know. Um, 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 um. Explain the, the tattoo that I showed and what's its meaning. Basically, the tattoo that I showed in the, in the video was of a man and, and woman embracing just in... Um, it was it's kind of like a dream that I had. <laughs> kind of like a dream. Nothing, nothing, you know, untoward about it. But um, so I just had that d depicted in a tattoo. So if I were ever to marry again, and I probably will not it will probably be to somebody with no hair. <laughs> Anyhow, um, mm, 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 mm. tips uh, to deal with mean girls or mean boys if you're your director or supervisor. Whew, that's tough, that is really tough. My tactic was avoiding them all together. Um, don't get drawn in to their games and just absolutely refuse to participate in, in mean-spiritedness and backbiting. That's all I can suggest you to do. Okay. Um, which do you prefer, van life or tiny house? Well, 
I think I like the tiny house better. The van life had so many awesome things about it, but the tiny house, I can grow things, I can make wine, I can do more of the kinds of things that I love to do, so definitely tiny house. Have you ever been married? Yes, I have. I'm divorced. Um, how is Betty's personality now as opposed to, you know, when you guys were living in the van? She's more at ease these days, um, and she's more exercised, so she's much happier. Um, what is the funniest thing happened to you? Oh my gosh, my life has been filled with funny things that have happened to me. I don't know. Gosh, I, I just don't know how to answer that. The funniest thing, probably, probably when I got my first knock-knock on the van when I was in Ohio and I was staying at a Walmart because I was going to be working in the area the next day. And so knock, knock, knock. And I came to the window, and of course, Betty shot up in the window. You know, and I had my jammies on. I didn't have a bra on or anything. And the kid, the kid, he looked like he was about 12. Um, when Betty got up to the window and just basically just was against that window, wanting to eat his face off, the look on his face was just like, <laughs> I think he was just trying to mess with me, but him, I think it ended with him not, with him uh, being a little bit sorry that he messed with me. Um, so, I don't know. That was kind of funny. I thought it was, but... Um, 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 what kind of camera did you use to take the pictures in that, in that one? Ask me anything. Um, I've got a new, cam uh, a new phone, and it's just the latest LG Stylo phone. And the old phone that I had was also an LG Stylo, but it was like four or five years old, and it wouldn't hold a charge. So, um, I'm just using my camera phone. Um, do you still fish? Well, I haven't fished since I've been to Tennessee, but yes, I do still fish, and I do still plan on going fishing here in Tennessee. Just get, I've got to get my Tennessee license. Uh, where, where was your previous property, and why did you move? Um, really, my previous property is less than 10 minutes away from here, and uh, still in Tennessee, uh, south of Jackson, and I left because the land... I don't have a lot of skills. That land needed somebody with a lot of skills, excavation and whatnot, um, to to get it to where you could live on it. It was not level. It was most of the land was it was 4.9 acres, but um, like four of it were unusable because it was always so damp. So I just found this property, and it's got everything I need, and it's much flatter, so it works better. Um, how old is Betty? She's about six years old. What breed? She's a pit bull. Um, she's a red nose brindle. Um, story of getting her. Well, I got her from a patient of mine who had two pit bulls and the mommy had given birth and the mommy was dying and um, she couldn't take care of her puppies. Um, so I got Betty when she was about four weeks old. She's got that crazy bark. They called her Banshee. She was the biggest one in the litter, and she just had a very funny, messed up bark from the very beginning. And she still has that bark sometimes. Um, you, you'll be able to hear her sometimes when she gets really excited. Um, that's just the way that she has always barked. And so they wanted to get rid of her first because of all the noise she makes. <laughs> so that's how I got her. Um, were you nervous cooking mushroom the first time? No, because I knew for sure what it was. Um, plant ID. Have you ever used that Plant ID app? Yes, and um, I took it off my phone because it incorrectly identified plants. Um, how far does your land go past the creek? I couldn't even tell you. I mean, feet-wise, I've only got 2.5 acres, and um, two-thirds of the property is on the side that the tiny house is in and maybe another one-third is over on the other side so I'm not really sure um, okay gosh my arm is getting I need a tripod so bad um, let's see okay did sister dying have anything to do with leaving in Ohio yes it absolutely did actually she she passed away a year ago this past March so she's been gone a little over a year um, I would say a week after she passed away is when I moved into the van. Now, I still lived and worked out of my van in Ohio until 
I want to say late August, early September. It was at that time that I decided I, I had had enough. I was just leaving and I didn't know where I was going. I just knew that I was heading south. And um, I knew I wanted to check out Tennessee. I wanted to check out Georgia. Those were two states that I really, really loved. Um, but yes, she, you know, her passing just kind of made me think. You know, she's a young woman. She's my age now when she was diagnosed with cancer. And she spent those years really suffering. And her passing, it just, it kind of, it was like a moment for me. And it was, it made me take stock of things in my life. And, you know, life is short. You've got to enjoy it. You've got to do whatever it is you got to do to enjoy your life. So, yes, it, that had a big part of it. What part of Ohio were you in? Well, um, our, the greater Dayton area. Um, once I moved in the van, I was more towards the Springfield area. Um because I kind of traveled around. I also stayed in Brickfield quite a bit. Did a lot of work in there too. Um, so just that kind of area. Let's see. How did you find him by your land? I already answered that. Uh, West Tennessee Landman. Look him up on Facebook. What is the song in that video where I let you ask me all the questions? It is by Jesse Gallagher. And let me see if I can pronounce this correctly. Venka Tasananda. V-E-N-K-A-T. E S A N A N D A. Venkatesananda. Venkatesananda by Jesse Gallagher. It is in the Creators um, Music Library and it is free to use without attri attribution. I should have put attribution in there though because it is a beautiful song. Okay. Oh my goodness. I think that's all the questions. Um, what I'm going to do is I am going to delete those questions and I'm going to leave that up so that if any of you have additional questions you want to ask for another video, you can then leave them in the comments section. So if you see your comments disappear on that one video, it's because I'm going to close the comments and then reopen them and I think that deletes them all. Anyhow, this video is almost 30 minutes long, way too long. So that's all I got for you guys. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.